Hello, I'm Reverend Steve Killam. I am the senior pastor here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. We would really love for you to join us for one of our in-person worship services. We worship at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Our uh, church is located at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. That's on the South Loop at the intersection of Hanks, and it's by Copeland Street. Uh, if, if you're worshiping with us online and you're from out of town and, and, and you like what you see and, and you wish to, to make an offering, uh, you can send that to St. Paul's United Methodist Church, and that's P.O. Box 921, Lufkin, Texas, 75902. Uh, and we, we would take anything and, and whatever we get helps us with this online service. Now, we are a United Methodist Church. Uh, if, if you are a United Methodist uh, member somewhere and your church has, has disaffiliated with the United Methodist Church and, and you want to be a part of a United Methodist congregation, that is us. We're, we're somebody that is free-spirited. We're all about the big tent. We have very conservative. We have very progressive people. Uh, but we know that Jesus uses a lot of different tools and a lot of different ways to spread the gospel to all people. Uh, at this time, uh, I just ask you to kick back, sit back, and, and worship with us, with the Holy Spirit. Go fight win. Amen.
Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit on each and every one of us that are participating today and let this service be truly meaningful and wonderful. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. Let's join in our profession of faith this morning. Our profession of faith will be the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended to heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. have some announcements for some things that are coming up. You know, in years past, uh, whenever there was a fifth Sunday of a month, we would all come together and we'd have a fellowship. We'd break bread. We, we'd have a common meal. And because of COVID and, thing, and, and what that brought on, uh, we stopped doing that and we kind of lost that tradition. Well, we're going to start that tradition again. And so October 30th is going to be a fifth Sunday. And so if you're in the Lufkin area uh, on Sunday, October 30th, come and, and, and join us uh, for, for worship at 11. And then immediately afterwards, we're going to go to our fellowship hall and we're going to have a church-wide uh, Halloween 
uh, Halloweeny because it's going to be a hot dog lunch, and, and we'll have some games and some stuff uh, afterwards just to to make it a big and wonderful time. And, and we invite you, and we hope that you can come. Uh, at this time, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we are a thankful congregation. We're thankful for all that you do in our life. We're thankful for all you do in our world. We know that there is a lot in our world that is full of chaos. We know that there are lots of obstacles wherever we go. But at the same time, we know that wherever we go, that you are with us. And that, that we can lean on you for strength and courage and wisdom as we tackle the things that that things that the earth can throw in front of us. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless this congregation. Uh, bless the programs, bless the ministries, bless the things that we do, and let them be for your glory and for your edification and not for ours. Lord, we ask that you bless each and every one of the people that are coming together uh, for this service, that are, that are watching this service, that are participating, that are worshiping you. We ask that you be with them and just light up their, their world, light up their heart so that they can feel the strength that comes through your spirit. Lord, we, we ask that you be with our leaders, both local, all local, state, national, international, because leading people, leading man is not an easy job. And we ask that you be with them so that they can do the things that you would have them do. So that they can do the things that are right and correct and just for all mankind. Lord, we ask that you uh, bless our, our people that are sick. Bless the ones that, that, that can't be with us today uh, in person. Uh, but we know that, that you have tremendous and, and fantastic things ahead of each and every one of us. But most of all, we, we thank you and we praise you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We praise you for that ministry that he, that he put while he was here on earth. And together, we lift up that prayer that he taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When I was young, you called my name. I tried to run, but still you came And you stepped into the dark Cause that's just the kind of God you are When heaven seems beyond my reach You still see eternity in me you're turning ashes into art Cause that's just the kind of God you are It's in the empty tomb It's on the rugged cross Your death-defying love Is written in your scars You'll never quit on me You'll always hold my heart Cause that's just the kind of God you are You gave me freedom from my sin You told me I can start again All the hurt is dead and gone Now we're your daughters and your sons Amazing grace, how sweet the sound we were once but lost, but now we're found Forever you hold us in your hands Cause that's just the kind of God you are Oh, it's in the empty tomb It's on the rugged cross Your death-defying love 
is written in your scars. You never quit on me. You'll always hold my heart, cause that's the kind of God you are. You are holy, 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 high and set apart. You are holy, 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 God, that's who you are. You are holy, 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 high and set apart. You are holy, 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 God, that's who you are. It's in the empty tomb. It's on the rugged cross. Your death-defying love is written in your scars. You'll never quit on me. You'll always hold my heart, cause that's the kind of God you are. Oh, it's in the empty tomb. It's on the rugged cross. Your death-defying love is written in your scars. You'll never quit on me. You'll always hold my heart, cause that's the kind of God you are. When I was young, you called my name. I tried to run, but still you came. And you stepped into the dark, cause that's just the kind of God you are. Hey, Tater. Hey, Chip. What are you doing? I'm working on my signature. But you're not writing anything. No, not right now. I'm concentrating on the thing I can do that will let people know I've been around. Oh, well, that's very clever. A little too clever. What are you really up to? <laughs> I told you. I'm trying to see what I need to do to put my signature on things so people will recognize the work of Tater. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. so what have you come up with exactly? Not much yet. But you know how Brother Steve does go fight win, amen, and everybody recognizes that? Ah, okay, now I get it. Actually, you already do a lot of things that people recognize as pure Tater. Such as? Goodbye, Tater. That's it? You're just gonna leave? <laughs> right in the middle of an important conversation? No, I'm referring to the way we end almost every one of these skits. <laughs> goodbye, Tater. Oh, that goodbye, Tater. Yes, and when I ask if you mind... Not usually. Right. <laughs> Wait, what? Correct. <laughs> I don't think I understand. I may be lost. Yes. Yes, you are. Oh. But God can find you. That's it. I'm not going down this rabbit trail any farther. Are you helping me do, do defying things or not? I'm sorry. I was just kind of picking with you. But you already do so many things that people recognize as pure tater. Such as? Goodbye, tater. Again? <laughs> Can you just once see an important conversation through its finish? I am. Just once. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you a list of things that you do that people recognize. Finally! When you say goodbye, Tater, at the end of our conversations. I do? You do. <laughs> and when you reply, not usually, when I ask if you mind. That is kind of cute. <laughs> It's kind of annoying. <laughs> or maybe that's the way you subtly do things that really change our world. 
Usually Josh does that. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean. Tater, you have to admit, you do a lot of things that people recognize. I think you already have a signature or two. I do? You do! So let's pray. Everyone bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Lord help us do good things. Help us do good things. So that people can recognize it. So that people can recognize it. Help us show love to others. Help us show love to others. And help others see you in that love. And help others see you in that love. Amen. Amen. Chip. This is one of the best conversations we've ever had. Thank you. You're a good friend. Thank you. Say goodbye, Tater. Goodbye! Tater. Yes? <laughs> Say goodbye, Tater. I already did! In your signature way. Oh yeah! Go fight, win! Amen! <laughs> That's not your signature way! I know, I panicked! <laughs> Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, verses 11 through 16. For this is what the sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements of the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, open up our hearts. Open up our minds and help us learn. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. You know, today I have some visual effects to help me illustrate today's messages. Uh, and these are some of uh, tools that, that East Texas stockmen would have been very familiar with, uh, even as recent as 60 years ago. Anybody know what this is? It's a cow horn. Probably from a Durham steer, and it was used to communicate. This particular blowhorn, that's what they call them, this particular blowhorn is getting a little old. It's getting a little advanced. You can see it has some, uh, some holes right here. And I can't blow it well anymore because it is. It's just a, a horn that was whittled out, and, uh, and it takes a lot of practice and a really good lip. Can't do it. But I used to be able to do it, and the lip is the, mis the muscles that are in the lip. But this, this horn has a very high tenor sound, and with practice, I could really make it sound very loud. Woodsmen carried these to communicate with dogs, with livestock, and with other people. If you got lost, you would blow this horn three times. If someone heard you, they, they had their horns also, and they usually did. Uh, they would blow twice to give you a mark to go to. And that way, you know, the three times means, you know, boop, 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 I need help. And twice means, you know, boop, boop, means come to me. Now, if you were injured and you couldn't walk, you blew it three times. Remember, uh, three times means I need, I need help. It's a sign of distress. And so a neighbor would blow twice, come to me, and then you would blow one long blow. I can't come, I can't go, you come to me. And then they would, they would hone in on that sound and this is how they would find you. This is how they would locate you to, to lend aid however they can. You know, this, this horn that I have can be heard for almost a mile and that's in the woods of East Texas. That's in amongst the tree. It doesn't look big, it does, you know, it's not a big brass object. But uh, it really, really can make a noise. I used to call, I used it to call my dogs with. 
uh, especially when I was hunting. Uh, I would at, at night I would I blow it and and most of the the dogs would understand it. And then after that, I used it to, uh, with my dogs that I used to herd stock with. And, you know, as they were working cattle, I would, I would blow it. And, and that meant to come to me, to come off, to, you know, to let them loose. Side note here. Late in my mother's life, she confessed to me that after I originally came home from college, and I, I ran a lot of woods cows in our area, you know, uh, cows that were out in the woods. Uh, I, I leased, you know, various tracts of land, large tracts of land for very little money. Uh, it was primarily for woods, but people would let me run cattle on them. And, and as I was doing that, she would go out on her porch in the evening and she would listen for that horn. When she heard it, she knew I was okay. And, and, and also when she heard it, she knew that she realized that I'd probably be coming, high, uh, coming by pretty soon to eat supper, you know. Now, this is one of the oldest tools that I own. It's a tool. And it is a prized possession because it was owned by my great, great grandfather, my grandmother Bain's grandfather. His name was Stephen Pate. Yes, I am named for him. And the, the, Faith that is personalized, personified this blowhorn is great uh, because uh, he, he carried it in, in Leon County where, where he grew up in the late 19th century, you know, a long time ago. And it's, it's one of the things that I have that helps me connect with people. Now, what is this? Now, I have to be real careful because this is loud. You know, this is something. That's right. It's a cowbell. Now, it's not to be confused uh, with the Blue Oyster Cult song where you need a little bit more cowbell. This, this is an actual cowboy, uh, cowbell. This is something that, that, that I used to put on collars. The, the Killam family used cowboy, uh, cowbells until the late 1980s. We would bell cattle. You would bell a herd leader. You'd bell the, the one that, that, that led the other cow. And it was always a female. And the, the, the female were always your bell cows. Your bell cows were the boss. And with that, that bell, you could hear the cows that were in the woods. Remember I said I, I read cattle in the woods? You couldn't see them, but as they were wandering along, and I had to shout to get over that, as they were wandering along, you could hear that bell as you hunted them. I also whistled to them. You know, I can't even whistle anymore. And I, I would whistle out, uh, and I would listen for that cowbell. And this was always also a way that the other cows would stay together. You know, but they would come in a, in a herd. We called them a bunch. You know, a bunch didn't mean a lot. A bunch meant a herd. You know, I have a bunch of cows over here. I have a bunch of cows over there. That, that was just a way of saying that you had a herd. But, you know, they're in the woods. They don't always see each other, but they, they wanted to stay as a herd. Cattle have herd mentalities. And so they could hear the bell cow, and she would let them, lead them as they did things. We belled our outside cattle. And the outside cattle were the ones in the woods. We wouldn't bell the dairy cows, you know, the dairy cows that were around. You know, the, I remember a lot of our bell cows. The one that I really remember was a Bremerkost uh, cow that we referred to as Old Dot. you got to remember, we named all of our cows, all the females we named. And Old Dot was named because... She was a yellow cow, a lot of Bremer cross cow. And in East Texas, they're not Brema, they're Bremer. She was an old Bremer cross cow, and she did. She had a white dot in the middle of her forehead. She was a tall, she held her, high, her head high. She had great calves. My father wanted to wean 20 calves from her, uh, but she didn't make it. She only had 18 calves that we, went, that we weaned. In case, you don't under, in case you don't know that, that's a bunch. You usually shoot for nine, maybe ten. And so Dot was special. Everybody loved Dot, even though she was crazy. And, and she, was the, she was the bell cow that I really, really remember. And I'm sure that this bell was one of the bells that we put on Dot. We used to also, they used to use these on oxen. Uh, draft animals and when they were using draft animals to haul logs out of the woods. And yes, I remember when they did that. 
uh, that it was good to let the flatheads, and the flatheads were the, the people that had saws. You know, it didn't mean that they had a flathead. That's just what they called them. They were flatheads. But it, 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 they used to let the flatheads know where, where you were. So if you were sawing down a tree uh, and they heard the, the, be- the bells from the, the draft animals, the oxen, they knew not to cut the tree down to where it would knock the oxen down or, or hurt the people. Okay, great. That's really informative, and that's a lot of fun. I had a great time, but what do blowhorns and cowbells have today? With, I had to do with today's scripture. You know, these are tools of old East Texas cowmen, the local shepherd, if you will. You know, sometimes I have to, I have to put myself in, into that position. You know, in Israel, the shepherd were the people that had sheep up on the hillside. Where I'm from, in East Texas, in the Piney Woods. Uh, the shepherds were the ones uh, that, that raised the cattle and the hogs. So this is what the good shepherd would use. God will seek us out. God will seek us out when we're scattered. How does he do that? Uh, maybe it's a, with a blast from his horn. I don't know. It worked for my dogs. They could be a long way away. Uh, but when they heard that horn, they knew to come running, that that, that meant to, to come on. Uh, some of God's people will be scattered. But when we hear the word of God, or when we hear the horn, that's a sign for us to come back. There have been a lot of things scattering us around lately. There have been a lot of different horns that you hear out there, a lot of noise, and maybe maybe it's just confusing some of us. You know, like I say, when my mother heard the sound of that old horn from a long way away, she knew it was me. She recognized it. I think we would recognize uh, God's horn. Uh, and, and in the same way that when we hear God and we hear that blast, we know things are okay. How will God know where we are? You know, that's where the bell comes in. God knows us. <coughs> Like a good cowman knows the sound of his bell cow. Like, like I knew the sound that, that Dot would make. And he will seek out the lost. I, you know, I have never used Ezekiel as a text in my sermons. And I've been doing this for 11 years. I can't see where I've ever done Ezekiel before. I really like the prophecy that he's doing. And he tells the people that he will seek out the lost. He will bring back the strays, the mavericks, if you will. He will bind up the wounded physically and spiritually, and he will strengthen the weak. You know, Ezekiel is actually prophesying against the priests and the religious leaders of his time. You know, in his mind, these are what Israel's shepherds should be, and these are the shepherds that are are working with them, but they're misleading their flocks. You know, he says earlier in his prophecy, and we didn't read this, but he was talking to the shepherds that you drink the milk, you wear the wool, and you slaughter the fat animals, but you don't tend the flock. You didn't strengthen the weak. You didn't heal the sick. You didn't bind up the injured. You didn't bring back the strays or seek out the lost, but instead you use force to rule them with injustice. That's some pretty powerful stuff that Ezekiel's throwing out there, you know, to 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 his men, to his people, to to the people that were like him. And he said, "You're doing this wrong," and and God is going to come back, and God's going to start shepherding His flock. So the question is, how are we shepherding God's flock? You know, as a pastor, I'm pretty sensitive to this. You know, as a former cowman, I understand what shepherding means, and I will confess then I'm not always a good shepherd. But I do have the tools to do things better. You know, it's not the bell. It's not the horn. It's tools that we all have. You know, it's tools that, 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 that God has blessed us with. Be aware. Listen. Listen to what the Spirit is saying. Listen to where God is leading. But most of all, Let your bell ring so it can be heard and keep your senses alert for the sounds of God's horn. Go fight, win. Amen.
Go out into the world showing the world God's love and God's grace, not just by the things that you say, but by the things that you do. Go fight, win. Amen. Say goodbye, Tater. Goodbye? Where are you going? Did I do something wrong? We could work things out. <laughs> That concludes today's service. Uh, if you are ever in the Lufkin area and you wish to uh, join us for one of our in-person services, we're located at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. We worship on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock. Also, if you wish to give us uh, an offering, that you can send that to St. Paul's United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 921, Lufkin, Texas, 75902. We are certainly glad that you took the time to worship with us, and we hope that we can see you soon. Go fight, win. Amen. <laughs>